hey, it's coffee, and yeah, shower. <laughs> I, I did a bunch of cleaning, so I had to shower, because now I'm sort of settling down to just do some more basic cleaning. Um, we're, we got a new fridge, like a secondhand fridge, and I spent like four hours last week scrubbing it and stuff because the people who had it didn't leave it open when they turned it off, so it was really moldy and stuff inside, it was just gross. So I spent four hours like just like scrubbing the fuck out of it. Um, so now we're like rearranging and cleaning the kitchen and stuff to put it in and get rid of the fridge freezer and the chest freezer that we've got. So there's just lots to do. So I was feeling gross from cleaning, so I had a shower. Um, still have to do the dishes though, which, uh, it's the never-ending adult story, dishes and laundry. Hello. Hi. What's up? Hmm? What? Come here. Ugh. Hello. Come here. This way. Here we go. Look here, Ben. He's been a sook because I haven't been home much. Um, I was home yesterday, but I was still pretty wrecked. No? Okay. Um, he has been pretty cuddly and stuff, not leaving my side very much because I had the, um, Sydney Writers Festival that I was volunteering for as well. I did four days of volunteer work. And I won't be doing it again. Um, it was... It was infuriating. Like... They had me do like a couple of different things throughout the week. Um, well, over the four days. And it would be like half an hour of like managing queues for author signings or, you know, leading, like showing people where they've got to go to get into each venue and checking tickets and all that sort of stuff. But then there'd be like an hour to an hour and a half in between each session where there was nothing to do. And that was it. Like, unless someone came up and asked you a question, there was nothing to do. So I ended up, like, it was infuriating just like sitting there for so long and I finished a book while I was there. Um, uh, let me just, I have things everywhere at the moment. So I finished book four of Lions and Lilies while I was there, and I started a cross stitch project. And yeah, that's over there as well. But there was just nothing to do. And what started to really infuriate me is on Sunday, on my last day. They had me doing the book queue, uh, the book signing queues, and I had been like, there was lots of people. Like this, I knew there were going to be lots of people um, because this author had done a signing on the Saturday at a different venue, and it was our biggest queue for the day. So I knew there was going to be lots of people. So I was preparing for it. I was like, all right, well, we've got four people signing at the same time. One of, those pe one of those authors is going to be the longest line. Then go right at the end of the table so I can snake this around here and still have three queues for the other uh, three people. Plus we had a, like a register where people could buy books, so there had to be a queue for that too. So I was managing the queue. I was moving people so that there was still space for people to walk through the queues to get to the upstairs area where the actual venue was, where the seating was, because they were about to let another session in. Um, so I'm doing that and I'm moving people and, you know, I'm using my wheelchair to make sure there's enough space for people to walk through and making sure people are standing where they're supposed to. And this other person who I, have, I still don't know who they were or what team they were supposed to be in starts moving people in the queue to her own specifications. So then the people that I've moved start getting angry at me because this person hasn't noticed that I've been doing the queues and that I've moved people so that people can get through with that. And she's letting other people in front of them when they're supposed to be next. So I'm trying to say, hey, like these people are the next people in line. And then she's just, this person's ignoring me. Um, and completely ignoring the system that I set up and stuff and like the queue that I'd set up. 
And I'm just like, look, just go. She's not listening to me. Just do whatever she says. And I went and sat off by the side. And that was it. Because the other thing that I was doing for book signing was um, going around and giving each person a post-it note with their name on it so that it would be easier for the author to sign their books. But the way that this person went in and moved the cues... I couldn't do that because everyone was in this tiny little space like all in and stuff and I couldn't get in there with the wheelchair like I just couldn't do it so I was just pissed off because it's like well, what 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 the fuck is the point of me even being here what is the point of me being on the book signing and you're supposed to be doing the queue management when someone else who's not even on the same fucking team on the same shift comes in and just does it all anyway but then the last half of the day they moved me to a different um different venue and um it's a staffed venue so they already have their own ushers they have their own ticket ticketing staff and all that sort of stuff so we were pretty much only there like just to answer questions and that was it but they had five of us there to answer people's questions but these were like some of the last events of the day so there weren't a lot of questions by that point everyone knew what was going on everyone knew what they had to do where to get their tickets and stuff like that and we didn't have to usher any cues or anything so when the last session for that theater went in the other four people disappeared and i was like oh well i guess i should probably go to now because you know i finish in you know like an hour the last session has just gone in. There's nothing to do here. This place is going to be empty. Um, and they're like, oh, no, no. Someone should stay down here just in case someone comes with questions. Are you fucking serious? But the icing on the cake was one of the volunteers came out. She's like, oh, I've just got to run someone to the green room. Um, there is another author coming. She's running a little bit late. Um, can you go wait over there and when she gets here just tell her I'll be like a minute or two and then I'll take her to the green room yeah okay sure I can do that so I'm sitting there the author comes up with the publisher and I say hey guys how are you um, and they just look at me ignore me turn to one of the venue staff behind the desk and start addressing them instead saying oh this is such and such she needs to be here for the show where's the green room and I just, I was so fucking livid. I was so angry. Um, and the guy, the guy behind the counter who they'd spoken to, like, sort of looked at me and he's, like, sort of, like, confused because he heard me talk to them and saw them ignore me and start talking to him. And, yeah, so then he ended up taking them to the green room and the other volunteer came back she's like oh where are they and i'm like they uh they completely ignored me spoke to the venue staff and got them to take them to the green room oh you should tell them to wait what part of they ignored me did you was unclear like you know they completely ignored me but yeah so i ended up leaving i, I left a half an hour early um like i pretty much left right after that so about half an hour early but it took me 40 minutes to get to the train station because they've got all the lights and stuff on for vivid so there's like cute there's like just groups of people everywhere and everyone fucking stops right in the center of the walkways to stop and take photos of shit and it's like you could at least move over to the side so people still get through and yeah it was just not great and i probably won't do it again um, I just, yeah, oh, and <laughs> on the first day, they promised me that there would be a ramp to get into the volunteer green room, because there's, like, this little ledge, because it's a, it's a heritage-listed building, so they can't actually concrete it and do all that, um, which I think is fucking stupid, like, it's, seems stupid to me, but they didn't have a ramp when I showed up. I'm just thinking, oh, well, this is off to a great start. I can't even get into the volunteer green room to sign in. So, um, eventually, like, this guy came over, and he's like, look, I'm sorry, 
we picked up a ramp, like we told them what the specifications and stuff for the ramp were and they gave us the wrong one. I'm, I've got another one in the van, I'm gonna go try and see if that works. So he comes back and he's got this little flimsy looking metal thing and I'm looking at it and like he hasn't even put it down. I'm like, there's no way. There is no way that is suitable for a power chair. And he puts it down and like he's, you know, and, and he walks up it to make sure it's not gonna shift. But as he's walking, like, sort of in that middle section, it starts to, like, bend a little. And I'm just like, if that's bending for this guy who's, you know, not not super tall, um, but he's fairly thin, like, he's not a big guy or anything. If that's bending for him, there's no way me and my power chair are going to get up that thing without it breaking. Um, so he came over and he goes, oh, what do you think? And I'm like, well, what's the weight limit? Because I guarantee that's not a big enough weight limit for a power chair. You know, when power chairs on their own can be anywhere from from 80 kilos up to, like, 150, depending on what's on them. Um, and, like, how big the batteries are and stuff like that. Like, power chairs are heavy as fuck. And then you put a fat person in a power chair, like, that's, yeah, that, that's a lot of, that's a lot of weight. Um... So he goes, oh, I'll find out. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's probably not going to work. I'm going to be honest. Is like, it was bowing. Like, it was starting to bow in the middle for you. Like, there's no way this is getting up there. So then they ended up having to, like, my my supervisor for that first day came out. She's like, oh, we're going to be over here. So we'll start heading over. Um, so then he was like, this guy was running around back and forth. And he actually built me a ramp for the room um which was all right like it wasn't the greatest ramp um someone in a manual chair would have had a problem with it but for a power chair it's fine but yeah I couldn't even get into the volunteer green room at first and that meant that I missed everything that had been said about the fact that they were providing lunches for us as well and like how to order those lunches for each day and that kind of thing because on two of the days, I should have had lunch provided for me. Um, instead, I had to buy food around there. And because it's the city, pasta is like fucking $22. It was ridiculous. So, yeah. Um, it was just, yeah. There's a, there were a lot of little things. And they all just sort of added on to... You know, like, having to sit there for, like, an hour to an hour and a half with nothing to do. Um, especially because the, the first day I was doing the book signings, they had me doing book signings on my own. Um, I didn't have anyone else with, with me, which was fine. Um, but they also had, like, a separate team who were managing that venue. So they managed the queues for each session. They managed where people go. And because there's a lift that's a little temperamental, they had someone manning the lift as well. But if there wasn't a book signing to do, there was nothing for me to do. Like, I couldn't even really help them with anything because they had everything covered. So yesterday, when there were three of us for the book signings in the same space, this is just, there were too many, too many people doing the same, trying to do the same thing. Um, and, yeah. So... I finished this. It's uh, Upside. Um, it's the final book for the Lines and the Lease series. So I'm going to start talking about things that, I, that I'm happy about now, which is books, because I have new books. Um, so yeah, it's finished. Um, but they are doing another series after this one. So they're not going to stop writing. They're not allowed to stop writing. That's, that's just it. They're not allowed to. Um, but the new series is going to be called... Um, it's going to be... It's still going to be The Lions and Lilies, but it's going to be like a series two. Um, and the first one is going to be called War of the Lion. So hopefully that will be out soon. Probably won't be, but I, 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 grew, up, I grew up a dream. So... Yeah, I have that. Um, that I finished. That's the point. Yes, you let in. I just gave you pellets. No, you you're just you're just a little fatty and you want more food. Silence. Because he knows it's true. 
Um, yeah, so apart from Sydney Writers Festival, I also went to a fetish party Saturday night because Saturday was my birthday. Um, and that went, that went pretty good. Um, didn't actually do anything, just like spoke to people and like made new friends and stuff, so that was nice. Um, yeah. Um, but one of my friends did come over earlier in the week to give me my birthday presents because I wasn't going to be able to do it later. So he got me, um, the new, one of the new Overwatch pop figures because there's a new series. Um, so he got me the Reinhardt with the helmet because there's a Reinhardt with a helmet and one without. Um, he got me a Widowmaker badge from Overwatch and then this cute little bat badge. Um. He got me some miniatures, which I'm being very careful because I have actually assembled them. Um, so these are Malifo miniatures, and they're like zombie nurses, and like, there's a, where is he? Can you see him on the box? Is he actually on the box? A little? No, he's not. There's a zombie chihuahua in here, and... I might actually open it because see if I can get him out. So I've I've assembled all of these. Um, so the biggest one is the flesh construct. So that's that's him there. I've got to base them, but I kind of want to get a new base coat color because I've got a black. But because of this guy, who is the zombie chihuahua. Who is seriously like that? That's it. He's is the same size as my finger, like, yeah. And he's not he's not focusing at all. But he's tiny. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm worried about coating them in black because I think I'll lose the details that are on him because he does have details on him. Like he's got little, you can see the vertebrae in his spine and stuff like that because he's a zombie. Um, yeah. So, and then there's a, a zombie canine as well. And, let me get the others out. They're very, some of them are very fiddly. Um, some of them were not. So we've got, um, this guy's name is Sebastian. He's got like a saw blade sort of thing. And we've got, this is, what's his name? McMorning, he's like a doctor, he's got like a decapitated head on his thing, and he's got this like creepy, like sort of Joker-ish smile, and he's, he looks, he looks great, but yeah, like they have such small details that I don't want to base them in black, I want to get a white to do them, and this is one of the nurses, you see Illidan in the background going up to the window again, and that's the other nurse, so... Yeah. So I want I want to get a white base coat to do them, just because I don't want to lose the details. I'm like the details will come out as I paint, but I kind of like I'd like to have them there before I start painting. And he got me those, um, and then he got me Neil Gaiman's North Mythology, which I have been waiting for for a long time. I've been eyeing it off because it just looks amazing. So yes, I have this. I'm just taking the price tag off it. Um, yeah. So this one, which I will probably be starting soon, actually. Um, I've been wanting to pick this up for a long time. So, um, and then something that I bought myself. Um, arrived the same day that my friend was here. This is the Adorable Circle of Life coloring book. So, yeah. This thing is absolutely adorable, and yeah, so they're single-sided. And it's just like predators and preys where they're all happy and adorable. Yeah. I'm like, look! Look at that! It's so cute, but horrific. It's totally up my alley. Like, this this is totally me. I'm just trying to find what, where my favourite one is. 
Well, what I think is my favorite one at the moment. So there's kitty. They're also on perforated pages, so you can take them out quite easily, which is always a nice feature in coloring books. Um, yeah. Look, look. This is so cute. But horrific. And I love it. And I can add as much blood and gore as I want. Where is it? Where's the snakey? Hey, look, at look at this one. It's like, you can see like the little bit of brain. Yeah. It's adorable. I love it. Which kind of says all things about who I am as a person when I think that this is adorable. <laughs> Did I go past it already? No, there it is. Look. Ah. Oh. It's so cute. I'm a horrible person, but it is so cute. Yeah. And there's actually like an art book one. So you can get it as a coloring book or an art book. So, yeah. I'm very happy with this. I cannot wait to colour some of it. Um, I'll, I will do a proper flip through of that. There's a couple that I've got to film now, actually. But, yeah. Um, so, then the other books that I got from this weekend. Um, so, some of them were freebies from one of the days in the festival, like the YA day. They had, like, boxes of books that they were giving to people who were going into the last event. And at the end of it, we still had a couple boxes left. So they were just like, you know what, just take some if you want some. And I grabbed a bunch. So this is one of them. Um, Hunted by Amanda Hallohan. Um, and this is something about... Oh, it's a sequel. Okay, it's a sequel. So I will find the first book and then make it to that. It was free, so, you know. Um, this one is called The Forever Court by Dave Rudden. And this is like a, um, there's like monsters and knights. Um, yeah. Oh, and this is a sequel as well. See, this, this is what gets me. Like, they were giving these books out for free to people. Why would you not give them book one of a series? Like... It looks like I've got two books to hunt down. But yeah, like, why why wouldn't you just give them, like, either standalones or book one of a series? If you're going to try and get them into, you know, new authors and stuff. It just seems a bit silly. Um, so there's another free one. This is Ballad for a Mad Girl by Vicky Wakefield. Um, uh, da 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 da. So it's about someone who went missing. Um, yeah. Uh, then this one, just because they had a heap of copies of this one left over. Um, this is When It's Real by Aaron Watt. And it's. It looks like it's a romance. Um. Yeah, okay, so basically, bad guy, rock star or something? Pop star. Um, you know, he's a bad boy sort of thing, and she poses as the girlfriend to try and make him, um, sort of just to change his image and stuff like that, and they fall for each other, and oh, oh, oh no. Anyway, it was free. Um, this is like a sampler sort of thing. Um. And then I have Stargazer, Stargazing for Beginners by Jenny McLaughlin. And this is... Oh, this is an uncorrected proof. Huh. But I had a bunch of these ones too. Um, so... Da -da -da -da. Okay, so it's like this girl who, like, she's totally into science and stuff. Yeah. 
Um, her mum leaves because her mum's basically a hippie and leaves her to have to babysit her younger sister who is a baby. Um, but it's like worst timing. She's trying to win some sort of NASA thing. Um, so she has to try and care for a baby which she has no idea how to do and win the competition. So, yeah. We'll see. And I actually somehow managed to pick up two of these. So if this does seem like something that you would be interested in, um, send me a message and I might be able to send it to you depending on where you are. Um, just because, yeah, I picked up two, so. Um, this one I actually bought. Um, this is Children of Eden by Jerry Graceffa, who is, um, he's a YouTuber, actually. But this sounds, um, quite interesting from what I remember reading. Um, so yeah, it's like some sort of, um, post-apocalyptic society sort of thing where everyone's going to be the same and she's different. Sort of special snowflakes, sort of thing. Oh god, don't do this. <laughs> oh my god, why did I have to sneeze just then? It must be all the dust and stuff from cleaning, um, but it's frustrating. Um, so this is another one that I bought, because I went to Basement Books on Thursday, so I got that from Basement Books, so it was, um, this one was six dollars. Um, this one and the other one I got were two for twenty. So, yeah, but this is, um, Akane by Lynette Noni, and she's an Aussie author, and she was actually at the YA day, but I didn't have this on me. So I couldn't get it signed. Um, so it's her first day to school. It's a it's a fantasy. Like I know it's a fantasy, um, and I have heard good things about it, which is why I grabbed it. But I don't really know much that, that much more about it, honestly. Um, she goes to school, but when she walks through a doorway, she finds herself in a fantasy world. Um, yeah. Okay. So it's it's like a magical fantasy boarding school sort of thing. Um it see it does seem interesting and there have been some good reviews on it, so yeah. Um the other one that I got, this is I picked up I bought this one at YA Day. It's a uh, Love Oz YA anthology. And it's um Amy Kaufman, Melissa Keel, Will Kostakis, Ellie Marnie. Jacqueline Mor Moriarty, Michael Pryor, Alice Ping, or is it Pung? Pung. Um, Gabrielle Toza, Lily Wilkinson, and Danielle Binks. So it's, yeah, it's like short stories by a whole bunch of people, but um, this was like the one session that I actually got to sit in and watch um, all, all, all over the four days. Um, and hearing the authors talk about some of their stories and stuff, um, I wanted to pick it up, so I did. Um, and I have, I actually got it signed, and take that out of there now. So that's Will Kostakis' signature there, which, not much to it. <laughs> um, and I got Amy Kaufman to sign as well, um, but she signed the first page of her story. Um, I also picked up Gemini by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff and she signed it um, there and then she's because apparently her and Jay Kristoff have a system she signs the top and he signs the bottom so that if they don't attend a signing together they can still sign it and leave space for each other um, which is kind of cool but yeah I actually have Gemini now and I, I held off on buying this because this was the one that I was supposed to go to the launch for and that was when like my phone died and my chair was freaking out and like everything went wrong and I couldn't make it to it. So I didn't get Illuminae signed and I didn't pick this one up to get it signed either. Um, but I was talking to Amy for a little bit um, and she was saying how 
Um, they both authors have got a friend who goes to their signings and stuff who is a wheelchair user. And they were doing a signing at one of the Dimmick stores. And I was saying, oh, the crowd is too big, we've got to move it downstairs. Um, and they ran into their friend who's a wheelchair user. She was saying, oh, yeah, no, there's not actually a lift to get down there, so I can't come down and see you guys. So, you know, sorry and all this sort of stuff. Don't make a big deal out of it. Um, but it sort of, like, ate at them and, like, sort of irritated them quite a bit. Um, so now they outright refuse to do any sort of shows, any sort of talks or anything at venues that are not accessible. So I have a lot of respect for that. Um, but they're working on book three. So she said that they're going to do another, like, launch for it and stuff. And, yeah. They also put... Um, their friend who's the wheelchair user is actually in this book too. Um, they've put her name in there somewhere, which is cool. Because that was like their sort of thing, like to make up for, you know, shitty venue and all that. Um, so this is the other one that I bought from Basement Books. And this is The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. And there are two versions of this cover. You've got it with a black and there's a silver or a white one. Um, but basically, this is sort of like... Um, so they have, like, this race of people who are called Diabolics. It's not really a race of people. It's, it's a class of people, I guess. Um, and they are genetically created. They're, they're not, um, born or anything. They're clones. Um, and they're supposed to basically protect someone who is powerful and, like, you know, like, princesses and senators and stuff like that. Um, so this book follows one who has to protect the daughter of a senator. Um, so then someone, there's like an emperor that like kid, tries to kidnap her as a hostage. So the person who is a diabolic ends up taking her place, um, so to, to protect the daughter and stuff. And it just becomes this huge dangerous situation in that. Um, and the last book that I picked up for free from the YA Day is a signed copy of Magnus Chase and the Sword of Summer by Rick Roy Orton. Um, which I believe these are the Nordic ones? Yes. So basically, this is, this series is completely separate from the Percy Jackson ones. This one's all based around Nordic mythology, um, which I love so much more than Greek mythology. And they had like two copies of this left in the boxes. And when I saw that sticker that says signed copy, I'm just, oh, mate. It's happening. It's coming home with me. So, yes, that is the other free book that I got. And now that I've uncovered it, uh, the stitching that I started, um, I just, I couldn't find another carry case that I liked, so I just went and bought a little um, pencil case. Let me just put X stitch in there. And... So this is an ink circles pattern, and so far I have done exactly this much. So I'm using Fibalicious Floss, which I will tell you the name of in a second. Yes, Illidan, hello, I see you there. Um, it is Green Witch, and this was one of the special like limited edition Halloween ones. So I'm stitching that. And I can't, actually I can, because it's on the pattern, I've just got to unfold it. So, this is Ink Circles pattern, and it is called, i find it, Aventail. So, yes, I started that one and stitched a little bit while I was there. Um, and the, the fabric I'm doing it on is a, a piece that I had left over from... Um, it's a Color Cascades one at Silver Springs. Um, so, yeah, that's the stitching that I started. I have one start, one new start for May. I did it. Um, other than that, I've been working on Emmy, which is the Nora Corbett, which is coming along quite nicely. So, a lot of, a lot of these sort of little bits along here. Um, and there's like a little tiny bit there. Those are the blended one. That's, yeah, so the, there is one blended colour. 
So I'm leaving that one to last so I can just sort of... Because that's going to be a pain in the ass. I hate doing blended colours, blended thrones. It's, it's a fucking nightmare. I hate doing it. But... Uh, one of my fucking wow figures has fallen down again. Huh. Alright. I'm going to go because I need to go and take my lunch out of the oven and set this to upload and then do the dishes and then I can relax a bit, hopefully. Um, but I will probably, I don't know when I'll do another video, to be honest. I'll talk to you guys later.